Okay, so we have no we have no new people joining. We have nobody else uh, leaving out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with a montage. Uh, one of the things you guys noticed when you were fleeing the halflings last time is that uh, there is a tower in the distance that uh, you you guys only really noticed it once it started to get light. Since you only arrived at this this hospital ruin uh, in the evening, you couldn't see far enough to notice this uh, this tower in the distance. But it's uh, but once it got light, you guys noticed it, and it's pretty much your uh, your uh, next landmark. It's it's definitely in the right direction, the direction you're supposed to be going. Camera up with it, because. What's that, Gerald? Oh, nothing, nothing. Okay. All right, so you guys are heading towards this tower. Um, let's go ahead and do a montage. Let's go ahead and start with Joel. Tell us about tell us about what happens uh, on your way to this uh, uh, this tower that you're after you escape the halflings, the cannibal halflings. Um, we see the tower in the distance. Uh, always kind of uh, staying ahead of these halflings that, for the first half, for the uh, first part of the morning, are are chasing us. Uh, more have come out, uh, but we've managed to elude them. Uh, I see these kinds of uh, these scenes where occasionally one gets too close. Uh, one of our characters uh, takes care of like you know that small uh, those you know those skirmishers that are coming ahead, and then we continue to make distance on them before we finally start coming to uh, crest a hill and see that tower very close to us. Okay. All right, Gordon, you, you, your contribu contribution to the, the, uh, the montage. As we're coming closer to the tower, I notice that there the tower are... Isn't that yeah, you're, you're just kidding. The tower isn't that close, by the way. Just you're, you're just getting closer. I, I I hate to go and retcon what Joel said, but yeah, you're not you're not right there just yet. Okay, so then it's just closer than it was before. Yeah, yeah, you're making good progress, but it's not you're it's not like you're going to be there really shortly. So anyway, sorry to interrupt, Gordon. Well, we top a rise, and I look down at the tower, and I notice that the tower is actually in the middle of a set of standing stones. Which, which yeah. I recognize as, you know, something that that the followers of the High Druid may have set up. Okay. Alright, and Gerald... So poor Harry Burley that's been poisoned. I, <laughs> he's just not going to be able to keep up. Um, you can't kill him, man. Oh, no. <laughs> but he has been poisoned. <laughs> oh. I start a small bonfire. <laughs> Get a spit ready. <laughs> and hopefully they, they like Harry better than they like us. <laughs> it might keep the rest of the party aghast, but hey, you know, they're not going to be very happy tummies after we get done. <laughs> All right, so... I, I mourn the loss. Poor, poor Harry Burley. He was a companion for life. Unfortunately, his life was very short. <laughs> <laughs> like a mayfly. Yes. All right, uh, I'm going to ask some questions to help contribute to this. All right, um, what do you guys use to, to navigate the, the forest, the deep, this deep forest? Uh, Joel. Um, well, to navigate the forest. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I keep, I'm thinking that every time, you know, we, 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 there's a steep hill that we climb and every, you know, that we, or trees and we, we catch our bearing and then continue always in that direction. Okay. All right. So, um, Gordon, uh, what dangerous flora do you run across as you're making it to, making your way towards the tower? Uh, several times we run across sections where there are enormous creeper vines. 
slithering along the floor of the forest and up the trees looking for something to uh, eat, we can only suppose. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fair enough. And, uh, Gerald, uh, what sort of traps did the halflings leave in this part of the woods? Pit traps. Spikes. Pit traps. Lots of pit traps. Lots of pit traps. Spikes. Very dangerous. All right. Fair enough. All right. And the last question I'm going to ask is for every, everybody. Uh, how are you alert to... How are you staying alert for any sudden dangers? Who is scouting ahead? Well... I think almost any of us would be appropriate, appropriately suited for that. Um, I've got better vision. I'm scouting <laughs> ahead. Okay. Go okay. For it. Zero is scouting ahead. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, Zero, go ahead and make a a, a skill check, uh, a perception check for me. Okay. Go ahead and uh, plus wisdom, whatever you think your best background for, for okay. percepting thing is. Let's see. If I was to use my best percepting thing, I would be the the prisoner of the Lich King advantage because, good lord, he was always trying to do something horrible to me. All right, All right we'll do that. Um, that's one there, plus three, boom, and dun 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 dun. dun, dun. It was looking good for a moment. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you're, you're not quite as perception perception worthy as you're, you thought you should be. So, what, yeah, um, well. as you guys are walking through a clearing, Ciro blithely kind of looking up the clouds and looking at the trees and and thinking about how much he really hates trees and how he would like to cut them all down. Uh, an owlbear bursts out from beyond those trees and attacks everybody. So let me go ahead and move you guys over to the map. And let me get rid of everybody who's not here. Uh, there we are. Uh, Alright, so Ciro, you're up there. Um, everybody go ahead and update your, your hit points. You got a full rest. Okay. Does that mean we have full hit points? Yeah, you guys have. Yeah, we have all points. our hit points and all our recoveries, and I have all my key points back. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Supposedly that updates it. Did Did it not update? Yeah, I'm okay. not. I can't update my bar one again. That's idiotic. Um, edits. All right. There you go. Yep. It doesn't have my hit points advantage I took from the last time. So. Okay. So what are your hit points? What is your hit point total? Okay. We should be looking. Oh no, we should be looking at forty-six. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So forty-six. Yep. Uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and put your hit points back up to their appropriate okay. levels. Uh, let's see. And uh, Velnard, your max is forty now. Yes, because I I got the I took the hit point in max for the second. Okay, time. yeah. All right. So let's let's go ahead and everybody roll me initiative. Um. The owl bear bursts out, and it's going to go for. It's going to go for Ciro, actually, since he's... So he's going to get one free attack on you before we start the initiative order. Boy, so, we're, we're hoping that we've got better rolls than this is looking like right now. <laughs> Mine's not terrible. All right, so uh, Ciro, what's your initiative? Nine. That's, yeah, that's not, that's not great. Uh, Velnard, what's yours? Eleven. That's not tremendous either. Kalud, what's yours? Sixteen. That's not bad. Unfortunately, the owlbear is twenty-four. So. <laughs> Go on there. So Ciro's gonna get hit twice. Ciro's, yeah, Ciro's gonna get 
It's gonna get hit pretty bad. All right, so uh, he All he right. bursts out of the the, the woods and runs right at Ciro, and he he rips and pecks at you. And let's see if he hits you. He probably does. But uh, eighteen versus AC. All right. Let's nice. call fifteen. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Okay, uh, you take fifteen damage, and you are hampered. Uh, which means that you can only make basic attacks while engaged. Uh, unfortunately, since it's his turn right again, um, he's going to make another attack right on you. And yeah, you take another 15 damage. Awesome. Owlbears are nasty, nasty creatures. But, uh, but now it is your turn. Actually, no, it's not your turn. It's Kalut's turn. Sorry. I forgot to sort first. Mm -hmm. Blue, you're up. You have seen this, uh, and you have you have wilderness backgrounds, right? Blue? Yeah. Well, considering you that I'm a thief catcher of the high druid and a lore chanter of the wild wood, I should know yeah. quite yeah, a bit have, about yes. Albar. So your answer is yes, then, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you notice that this Albar looks incredibly emaciated. It looks like it probably hasn't eaten in quite a while, and that's why it's uh, probably why it's so vicious. I mean, owlbears are never nice, even at the best of times, but uh, this one looks particularly desperate for food. Um, okay, we got to kill this thing, or it's going to eat zero. It might eat zero. It looks now. really hungry. Do we have food to give it? So, Kalud, it's your turn. Why did he give up Harry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harry Burley would have been very useful right now. <laughs> yeah, if you kept Harry Burley, you might have been able to get out of this fight. <laughs> See, you should never let your ass go to waste. And... <laughs> <laughs> Kalud will assume his heaven's thunder stance and uh, rush the owlbear and give it a nice poke with his staff. That should do pretty well. Uh, yeah, 24, that's versus AC, I'm assuming, right? Yes. All right, you do indeed hit. All of my attacks are currently versus AC. Okay. So go ahead and roll your damage. 11. So he will take 11 damage, and I activate my Echo of Thunder effect. Until the start of my next turn, I deal two times my level damage to each foe that attacks me. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? You still have a quick action, I think. Uh, that's that's all I'm doing right now. I don't want to use any key right yet, so. Okay. I'm good. All right, next up is Velnard. You have seen this hungry owlbear. You probably don't realize that it's hungry the same way Kalud does, but you've seen this thing come out of the... burst out of the forest and run straight for Ciro and start just laying into him. Hmm. Uh, how big is an owlbear? I mean, just... It, it's it's pretty big. This thing is like like nine feet tall. Okay. It's towering over me, and I'm a pretty big dude. Yeah, it, it's it's bigger than all of you. Um, you it, even bigger than Rocknar would if he were here. Vilnard is going to either try to flip over it or under it, whichever is easiest, to get to the... it's... to get behind it. Okay. And Probably under. Under? Under, yeah. I would okay. Add. So, he, he, he goes running, uh, slides like if he's going into home plate, um, 
underneath the the uh, the owl bear, gets behind it, and as as he goes under, he shoots twice up. <laughs> All right. Take a plus one on the attack for the description. Not that you actually actually you did need it. So nineteen versus AC that will hit. That's an even roll, so I get the second one. Well, no, uh, your roll is actually odd. Okay. Um, I'll allow it. Okay. In this case, he had, a, he had a really good description, so I'll allow it. Okay. Yes, I'm willing to bend the rules if it's cool. Okay. I shoot everybody else that's playing the game. There's ten. And the second one was a miss, though, right? Uh, yes, the second roll is a, an, indeed a miss, but you do your miss damage. So. so total of 14. 14, all right. So your second shot just kind of uh, grazes its, its leg as you're going by, but the first shot goes goes straight into its belly all the way up to the, to the, the fletching on your, uh, on your crossbow bolt. I don't think that's what it's hungry for. No, I don't think so either, but that's what it got. So, uh, Ciro, you are up. I am going to use Rage. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm unhappy, so let's start with that. All right. Oh, dear Lord, you got to be kidding me. A 15 and a 17? <laughs> Either one of those matter? Uh, neither one... No, neither one hits, I'm afraid. Okay, I'm going to enter in a great and storied tradition of dark elf <laughs> cruelty. Cruelty. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, yay me, cruelty. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Jared, you're still going, right? Um, yeah, yeah, we're... We're gonna we're gonna apply cruelty at this point. Okay. <laughs> we got nothing so else. Your, your miss damage is there, and don't you, do you have building frenzy? Oh, building frenzy. Uh, yes, we do. Okay, so uh, just a yes. bit. Yes, yeah, you did. We'll, miss. We'll, we'll cruelty this time, and we'll see if we're around to build any frenzy the next time. Well, I think building frenzy is automatic, isn't it? Yeah. As it's a free it's action. A fr yep, you're right. That's yeah, a free action, so yeah. Right? So, and I've right. got it as an adventure feat for D6, so... Oh, nice. Let's, let's roll that. Dun, 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 dun. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this dice don't like me today. <laughs> so let's see. Hold on a second. Let's it up. Just an oh, absolute... Yeah, hopefully the, the, the dice will be... Will be uh, Less cruel to you guys. You guys are not very Wow. Thump thump. Well thump. actually then actually that, that D six doesn't apply until the next time you actually hit, so that's so true. You still have, you still have the got... potential to to make it okay. Yeah. Uh, you got one coming up. <laughs> Alright, All right. so uh, top of round two, the escalation die is at uh, two, is it one? And I'm trying well, to actually Aaron, I, I, I made a I made a mistake. I got I got to get used to my character sheet. That that first hit should have been also a crate at times two, so an additional ten. If you want to mark it, if not, I understand. Uh, I I'm not going to this time. Um, the way that I uh, and and you had no way. Actually, no. I'll apply it this time, but I'll let you know that the way I do things is you can't you can't go back once somebody else's turn has gone by. In this case, I'll let it go, because I don't think I told you guys that, and that's my bad. I should have done that. But, uh, yeah, if you need to change anything, um, if you forget a number or whatever, forget damage or healing or whatever, um, by the time the next person is rolled, it's too late, usually. Okay. But in this case, since I didn't tell you that, I, I will go ahead and apply that damage. Um, did you have a magic weapon? I can't remember. No, I had the... Uh, what was it that I had to do the battle hymns for? Uh, I don't. Rem I honestly don't remember what I gave you. That's the helmet. Oh, uh, yeah, you had That's the helmet. That's the helmet. 
Okay. I, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't remember what magic items I gave everybody. So I don't remember you um, honestly. I, I I did. I should have written it down and I did it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, go ahead and write it down once you remember. I think you did get the, the helmet, Joel. Um, and uh, I will. Uh, let me actually let me go get the the PDF of that real quick. Uh, it'll only take. It's uh, plus plus one to mental defense. And it's got a six plus recharge power. Yeah. And where is it? Where is it? That you can. Oh, there. Okay. Roll a save versus one ongoing save ends effect as a free action. Uh, I just posted a link to the the, uh, yeah. the item PDF. Oh, nice. Thank you. And the, so you guys can uh, look it up your uh, your uh, items. I know some of you have items that aren't on there. I know uh, Gerald has a a weapon that isn't on there, but whatever. That's because it is better. Anyway, um, Owlbear's turn. Um, which one of you? Uh, Velnard did the most damage, so he's gonna the, the Owlbear is gonna round on on Velnard, really angry at you know having shot him. And uh, let's. And he's gonna rip and peck at you. What? Uh, Seventeen versus AC. That is a miss. That is a miss. All right. It would have done. It would have done fifteen damage hit to hit. So it's a good thing it did miss. And that's the Albert's turn. Kalud, it's your. You are up. I will hit him with the willow bend. Okay. I drop into a split and bring up my staff between his legs. Now that's just not nice. Even on or her legs. Or her legs. Since it, it, it's a it's a him in this case. You know because of your learnings. And the dog can confirm that. <laughs> Twenty six will hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. And don't forget your staff is a magic weapon too. So yeah, it's it's added in there. Okay. So, that'll be 14 damage. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to, I forgot to take off the, uh, the 10 damage for cruelty for the owlbear, so let me do that now, too. And let me roll that save. It does not save, so it's still bleeding out from zero. All right, anything else glued? Kalud bounces up from his split and taunts the owlbear. Okay. And Velnod, you are up. Oh, it's bloody. Okay. Yes, it is. It is staggered. Not staggered, right? Um, and he's he's engaged with me. So I, if I if I step away, I'd incur an attack of opportunity. Um, well, you can disengage. So you can try to step away and not deal with the attack of opportunity. With with and but does that mean that I don't uh, I don't roll to attack or? No, you can still attack. Uh, disengaging is a move action. All you do is you roll a you're rolling your basic save. You need to roll an eleven or higher. And then you can move freely without taking up an opportunity attack. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. If I if I fail, what happens? If you fail, you can either stay where you are and have nothing happen, or you can move and take the opportunity attack. Okay, I'll take. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to break. I'm gonna try to disengage. Okay. So roll a straight up d20. All right, you, and you're disengaged. You can move anywhere you'd like. All right. Kind of does a little backflip. Uh, how tall is this rock over here? 
it's pretty tall. It's taller than the owlbear is. It's about maybe maybe 10, 11 feet tall. How about this little one next to it? Uh, it's about the same. It's a little bit shorter. It's about the same height as the the owl bear, maybe seven or eight, eight feet tall. Okay, he's gonna try to leap on top of that. Okay. Do you need me to roll something? Um. Yeah. Go ahead and roll me athletics. Uh, your your red monk plus uh, plus strength, I think. Not dex. Not dex. Oof, nice. All right, you you try to, to jump up on there, but you lose your grip on the top of the rock, and uh, you 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 can't get up on the rock, but you don't take any other penalty. And then I'm just gonna go for the straight up hit. Okay. Go ahead and make your attack. That'll hit. Okay, that's a crit. I'll roll and. And then even num, yeah, that's an even number. So I roll again. Yep. That's a miss. That will miss. So go ahead and roll your damage. Oh, what a crappy roll! So I have six times two, twelve plus four, sixteen. Okay. So you you put you put another crossbow bolt. All the way up to the feathers in this uh, owl bear's back, and your other shot just like, once again just grazes it. Uh, you didn't have you, you you didn't have the aim that you thought you did on that. So, um, anything else? You still I'm done. Do All right, and zero, you're up. All righty. Well, let's continue the rage and see if I can get even angrier. <laughs> Not the particularly manners for Ciro since he ow <laughs> only does <laughs> basic wow. attacks. But is there a save from that hampered, or was it a round thing? Or uh, that was a one round thing. So he's he's free from the now. <laughs> wow. Obviously not one and <laughs> that's that's. Frenzy increases. <laughs> <laughs> there are no words. There really aren't. All right, Steve, do your your uh, your level damage. You're you're just really you're swinging away, but this owl bear, it's like it keeps managing to to duck out of the way. Either that, or you're so angry that you're not really you're not really aiming very well. You're Feather. just kind of going. Argh. I'm allergic to feathers. <laughs> Your he's got, he's got alberophobia. <laughs> That's <All right>. too. <laughs> the owl bear. What would the owl bear do? Uh, its Diggle. favorite prey ran away, so it's going to turn around on Kalud, who's the only other one that hit it so far, and we'll we'll rip and peck twenty three versus AC, which I know hits, so take fifteen damage, and then it is it is just. It's enraged. It's that uh, that it's not been able to take a real big bite out of any of you, and so it's going to attack again. And this time, it's going to attack zero. And good God! All right, so both of you take fifteen more damage. And actually, that that was the top of round uh, three. The escalation dies at two. And it is Kalud's turn. Kalud will shift into uh, Claws of the Panther and use his uh, twinned Panther Claw finishing move on the Owlbear. Okay. Clubbing him first on one side of the head and then the other. Roll away, roll away. And I get an extra plus one bonus because he attacked me. 
So there's the first one. Nice. There's the second one. They both hit. And it will be two of these. So 23 damage. All right. So this owlbear looks like it's it's pretty much down to its last leg between being uh, between being very emaciated, very very clearly very sickly and starving, and the fact that uh, you guys have beaten the crap out of it, it looks it's it's barely still alive. And uh, Belnarn, it's your turn. I actually feel bad for this owlbear. I got to tell you. Um, Vilnar just stands poised there, takes aim, and fires. Um, so this plus two, that's still a miss, 16. Yeah, that's still oh, a miss. But he gets a second shot. He gets a second shot. It's an even number. It's it's your actual dice is the... Uh... Oh, right. You're right. You're absolutely right. So you still do your, your miss damage, which is four, right? Correct. Okay. So you managed to, to hit this thing, but you didn't do you didn't do near the damage that you had been on previous turns. And Ciro, you are up. Swing, swing. Zero, zero, zero. All right. Eighteen. Come on, come oh, I on. hit with something. The escalation. Does that does that put them over oh, the top? Oh crap! I forgot to add the escalation on the two. Sorry. Right. So it's a 16 and a 20. The, the 20 does hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. And don't forget your building frenzy. Survey so says... Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you're doing 2d20. Oh, sorry, 2d10. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Hold on that thought. I was like, wow, that's a lot of damage. Holy shit. There we go. It was a better number anyway. Oh, really? Well. All right. Describe how you just slaughter this, this poor owlbear. Well, it's wounded. I cut its beak off. <laughs> that's good. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> Got its beak and, and the, the entire rest of its head from about here up. <laughs> yeah, that would work too. All right. All right. So you guys have have defeated the emaciated Albert. Welcome to the wild wood. Recovery. Yeah. If you guys are uh, if you're staggered, you have to spend recoveries. If you're not staggered, well, you can still spend recovery anyway. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure the zero, yeah, you're at one hit point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doing nothing useful here. All right. So you have you have killed this this owl bear, this starving owl bear. Uh, you you think, uh, collude that it probably drove off most of the prey in this area, and that's why it was starving. It also probably didn't help that there was the, the falling uh, stones from Dark Sky. Probably did a number on the prey species that this uh, this guy uh, used to eat, and that's why it, what probably drove him to desperation in attacking you guys. Because even though owlbears are usually ornery, they're usually not stupid, and attacking uh, three travelers is not something most owlbears would do by themselves. No, it was definitely... But it was starving, it was, so... It was definitely... I mean, if we'd seen it, we probably could have dealt with it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And if Ciro had kept his ass... <laughs> Yeah, seriously, if you guys had kept Hurley, Harry Burley, uh, you you could have seriously got out, gotten out of this fight. All you had to do was offer up your 
your ass is a sacrifice. <laughs> but no, you fed your ass to halflings and yourselves, for that matter. I, I mean, you guys ate some of the ass too. So, the burro. All right. So, as everybody rolled their, you, uh, uh. Ciro, go ahead and roll your recharge for your rage, too. Don't forget. So it's basically just a save you 16 plus, and then you can rage again today. And Gerald Tube's frozen. Any, does he look frozen anybody else? He's uh, either he's frozen like or really like intense in thought. There he goes. There, yeah, he was lagging. Yeah, yeah, that that that's not gonna fly. No, no, unfortunately, you're all raged out. <laughs> sad, sad times. Okay, so you guys have Did we insult the dice gods this weekend, Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, you really need to make mm. a sacrifice or something. It's because it's you are a roll except for that last <laughs> that last and, round. And, really poor. And, unfortunately, these aren't even real dice, so you can't even burn it for rolling bad. Yeah, or throw it away. <laughs> I had uh, I had a friend of mine do that once. Uh, his dice were rolling so badly, he took it out, went outside, and threw it as far as he could. <laughs> We never saw it again. Hopefully, nobody ever found it. So, all right. So, uh, and then we lost your own. So, we'll, we'll give him a second to come back. In the meantime, I'll check the Q and A and see if we've got any questions about Greece. No, we don't. I still think that's hilarious. No, I had a friend who uh, used to sacrifice dice that rolled poorly in front of all of his other dice to uh, <laughs> to 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 warn them. That this yes. Them. Yeah. I've never done that, but but there have been some dice that I've just completely gotten rid of. There was. Uh, when I was rolling initiative for uh, not this turn, but the the first session, I was I rolled initiative, I pre-rolled for everything, and I was getting, I there was nothing in the middle. I was getting like I was getting ones, I was I was getting ones and twos and threes, and then I was also getting eighteens, nineteens, and twenties. I I think I think consecutively I got I got a nat twenty. Three natural ones, another nat twenty, a two, a three, and then a nineteen on the initiative. There was nothing in between on this on this initiative thing. So everybody was either going first or they were going last. Um, that was the that was the initiative that I lost because of the way roll twenty does things, unfortunately, or fortunately for for you guys maybe. I, I think I remembered it. That was against those uh, the, like the mutant zombies, right? Yeah, it, it, the mutants. Uh, I had to roll initiative as is, but I, I'd originally pre-rolled it, and then you guys never fought the the crystal guys because we were running short on time. But I'd rolled for them too. I wish I, I really wish roll twenty would uh would kind of fix that. But then again, they're always working on it, so hopefully it'll be it'll work that way soon enough. This, uh, this virtual tabletop thing is really, I mean, certainly a whole new market development for it. I mean, there's two Kickstarters that recently funded. Yeah. Um, yeah, virtual virtual tabletops have been, uh, they've, there's been different virtual tabletops around for a while. There's been stuff like map tools and, uh, let's see, what are some of the other ones? Um, D20 Pro is another one. What is the other one that we used, Gordon? Um, 
Uh, map tools. Yeah, map tools. D twenty Pro. We did. Uh, I can't How's remember. D twenty Pro compared to this. D twenty Pro wasn't as good, but I mean, granted, it's been a while since I used D twenty Pro. The problem with D twenty Pro is that one, it costs money. I mean, to even use it at all. Uh, I mean, with Roll Twenty, if you pay, you get extra features, but you don't have to pay. Uh, with D twenty Pro. You have to buy a GM license to, to be able to use it. Um, so you have, it's basically paid software. And uh, at the time when we were using it, it was really, if you weren't playing third edition or Pathfinder, it really, it really wasn't that great. It was, it was built definitely in mind with those, that game in mind. And uh, if you were playing anything else, even if it was other D&D, because we, uh, we were playing fourth edition, and uh, it, w it, it it just you had to kind of fight to make it work. Um, so I mean that may have changed because it's been like two years since I used it. Uh, but at the time, if you weren't playing Pathfinder or Third Edition D and D, it wasn't worth using. Uh, the other one, the other one we used, Gordon, was Game Table, uh, and that was in theory Game Table wasn't too bad. The reality is it, it was really, really buggy and had a lot of problems. And they stopped... And the people who, who did Game Table were the people that went to Wizards of the Coast to do their virtual tabletop. Mm. And then that virtual tabletop got cancelled. So, um, But there's been other ones. There, there's, there's definitely been other virtual tabletops. It's just been... Uh, most of them haven't been very user-friendly or... So there's been some other thing with the roll twenty has been it's been it's been a really nice combination of having good features, useful features, and supporting a lot of different kinds of games, as well as uh, being fairly easy to use. There aren't a lot. It can get complicated if you're doing different things, like if you're using the uh, dynamic lighting thing uh, as a GM. That can that can be kind of hard to do. Um, not necessarily hard, but it's it's kind of tedious. It's not really it's it's not fun to implement, but the the end result is really cool. Um, the macros are easier to do here than they are in Map Tools. Um, stuff oh like, yeah, yeah. Map Tools, you basically have to program your macros. Yeah. And Map Tools is is like it's like. As easy as things happen on this, it's like, I mean, you actually have to go through their reference to be able to do just about anything in map tools, Yeah. aside from maybe chat in their chat window. Yeah, it, map tools is very powerful, and it's been very powerful for a long time. You can do almost anything you can think of in map tools. But it's not easy to do. It's not very user friendly. Either, either for, as a GM or as a uh, as a player, you have to put a lot more work and effort into it to uh, to make map tools work. I mean, once you once you know it, it's I'm sure it's fine. But in comparison to Roll Twenty, you have to put a, a lot more time up front to be able to use it. Whereas with Roll Twenty, I. I it was it wasn't too difficult to start using right away as a GM or a player for that matter. Um, I've seen the I, mean, I, I understand what you mean with the map tools. I mean I've I've uploaded I've uploaded it. I've, I toy with it very briefly, not enough to really not even to scratch the surface. But I've seen yeah. some of the stuff that people have done with the dynamic lighting, and I'm to the point where it's like I, yeah, where if where eating it's amazing what you can do with it. Yeah. yeah. Like even figures block line of sight. Like they have it to the point where uh, a figure gets in the way of something and that blocks the line of sight. And I was like, wow, that seems... Yeah, yeah. and the dynamic lighting here on Roll20 is... It, it's pretty good, but it's not it's not quite up to that level. Um, it's still really cool, though, when it works. But it's one of those things that unless I... Uh, Oh, unless I think it really adds to the scene, I don't use dynamic lighting for Roll20, just because it is, it's difficult to set up, and it's a little buggy. 
Um, sometimes it doesn't work for people, and they'll be stuck in the dark, which sucks. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, when it does work, it's really cool. I've done it in my home game uh, a few times when I thought it was dramatically appropriate. Uh, like one time, the players were in a graveyard, and it was all dynamically lit. And so they, they all had torches and stuff like that, and there was monsters jumping out of the darkness at them um, and stumbling out of the darkness to attack them. And I thought it, and it was very atmospheric, but in a lot of cases, it doesn't add a lot. So I don't use it a whole hell of a lot. Um, but it can be fun. Um, but the, other, the, the really nice thing about Roll20 that, that I think people overlook is that since all the servers, are, they maintain the servers and you're not doing direct peer-to-peer -peer connection, there aren't the same kind of connection problems that you get with map tools or game table or, uh, or oh, any good. other. That's, it, it's, that, was, it, that was the worst thing about map tools. Yeah, it's, you have it's one fun. person, one person, if they're on a different version of map tools, everything doesn't work. Yeah. Or one person just doesn't get the maps and the tokens. Yeah. Or yeah, or there's some or the person hosting that you can't connect to them for whatever reason. It, it's the fact that Roll Twenty has their own servers and you connect through them takes a lot of the the whole pro the networking problem out of it. Um, hey, Gerald's back. Yay. Um, and he's good. Sorry, gentlemen. It was That's one of right. those wonderful moments where it's like, hey, let's update your system without asking. Oh, yeah. Don't you love that? Oh. <laughs> Hi. I'd like to be the person who owns my computer. Just kind of like when you own your car, I don't expect GM to come back and drive it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back. Uh, we were talking about virtual tabletops while you were gone. <laughs> and the failings thereof. Okay, got it. Yeah, the, the, well, I mean, we were talking about how base, how Rule 20 is really kind of uh, why they're doing so well in comparison to prior ones. So um, They don't suck? Well, I mean, that, that's pretty that's much sort of part of it. Yeah. But... I mean, there's more to map, it than that. But map that, tools that doesn't more. suck, but map tools requires a huge investment in time yeah. if you want it to work decently. Yeah, and even then you might have connection problems, which is uh, one of the other big advantages for Roll20. The, the, the fact that they got integrated with Google Hangouts, I think, has done a lot for, uh, for Roll20 as well. So, I think Google Hangouts yeah. has done a lot for online role-playing in, in general. general. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with that because you see a lot more people uh, posting their videos and, and even the ones that aren't posting their videos. Every single week, uh, I see a lot of people uh, talking about their online games. So, But let's, let's, let us continue onward since we have so much to do today. Yay! Um, let's walk over the corpse of the owlbear. Yes. I keep the beak. Oh, I'm keeping the beak. <laughs> we got the beak. We got the beak. <laughs> we got the beak. Yeah. 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 That's just... I'm, I'm going to make a wine, lovely wine cup out of it. <laughs> All right. So you've got your, your wine cup to be. You can you can do that in your downtime. You can be crafty. And uh, But uh, you guys continue onward. Having uh, left this clearing behind, and not too much later, you guys run into uh, uh, some forest ruins. You're you're really not sure uh, how old these ruins are, uh, where what what they even really were. Um, let's see. Um, everybody, go ahead and roll your your icon relationships for me. Let's see. Let, let's let's see if we can determine what these icon what these. Uh, Ruins might have been or might have been associated with. So there's a couple of fives. And those fives are with the uh, diabolist and the priestess. Uh, diabolist conflicted, priestess positive. Okay. So you think, uh, as you guys, as you're looking around, you think that you 
this might have been a temple or something, uh, Velnard. You do you think they might have been a, a at one point some sort of temple or church or monastery or something? But uh, there's evidence that uh, there there may have been it may have been uh, desecrated by by demons or demon worshippers uh, at some point. There you, you can you can find in some of the uh, the pillars and the low walls you can find uh, carvings in them that that uh, correspond to some of the the things you've seen in your time uh, dealing with demons. So this, uh, it, you still really have no idea how old this may have been. This may have been ages past, or this may have been, you know, 50 years ago. You really have no way of knowing, unfortunately. So, um, so I'm gonna ask you, uh, ask you some questions, so you guys can uh, can help determine what this place is like. Um, uh, Joel, uh, what do you find of interest here, and how is it dangerous? There is a um, there is some kind of rune as I'm as I'm watch, as I'm looking at these runes. There's some kind of rune that is either a rune of some kind of summoning or some kind of uh, like circle where it entraps something. Okay. So there's either something ha something dangerous has once been here, trapped here, or may even still be here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds good. So let's go on. One another question. Um, Gordon, uh, who who does it look like has been here recently, and why do you fear them? Well, with my uh, thief catcher training, I notice some tracks around the the circle that uh, Velnard was was speaking of and while the casual observer might think those belong to a uh, deer or elk or some other forest animal while the hooves are cloven I realize that this is not an animal this is the tracks of multiple demons all right, interesting. All right, and one last question uh, for Gerald. What do you find that is still useful, and why are you hesitant to take it? I found a very large leg bone, and that would be normal in and of itself, except that inside of that leg bone is this obsidian piece of glass that looks sharp and intentionally put there to cause damage. I'm not sure I want to pick it up. Okay. All it could right. also be the fact that it's covered in maggots and they glow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Glowing maggots, not so good. Um, let's see. All right. Uh, this is a meta question. What, what magic items does everybody have? Include, include runes and oils and potions as well. Uh, I have a rune and clearly a cursed sword <laughs> of cruelty. I have a staff of vengeance. And that's, that's it. You no, you also yeah. have the potion that Vilnar threw at you. Oh yeah, he does have that potion. Uh, and then I have the helmet that gives the plus one to mental defense and the ongoing and all that stuff. Alright, everybody go ahead and Mm. I don't know if I want to do that or I'll do that or not. Yeah, everybody choose one of your icons and uh, and make another icon relationship. You get to pick this one. I'm going to go with the Diabolus considering everything that's going on in here. Okay. Help queen. <laughs> nope. Five. Bye. Yeah. Okay, Gordon. I'm gonna go with the priestess. Okay. Since this looks like some sort of temple, and really the high druid isn't into temples in in these sense, so That's I don't think it's a 
I don't think it's a place of, of the high druid. It's more likely to be a place of the priestess. Us, yes. All right. So, Gordon, you you're you're digging around. You guys are looking at these ruins, and buried under a pile of rubble, you catch a, a glint of something shining, and uh, you you go to investigate. You pull out a uh, it's a pendant of some sort, and it's uh, you you pick it up and you look at it and you recognize it as a life stone pendant, and. Uh, so the, 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 you can feel the, the stones in this, this necklace. You can actually feel them breathing just ever so slightly. And uh, the, the magical ability is you get a plus one saves when you have ten hit points or fewer. Mm -hmm. There you are. You can look at it now. Or at least you can while I'm still talking. Or if you click me. So. Uh, yeah, it was... But anyway, anyway... You getting the shakies. Yeah, I know. It's kind of hard to hold that steady so you can read it. Uh, but anyway, you get a, like I said, you get a plus one to saves when you have ten, ten hit points or less. Um... You also get a plus five to uh, two death sa death saves. Excuse me. So, so in case you guys run into any more halflings here, you're probably not going to die right away. At least until they eat you. And the quirk is that you chide others for for taking risks when they have uh, lesser magical protection than you do. So that so, means I'm going to uh, be giving Ciro a hard time constantly. Yeah, definitely Ciro. Maybe Joel on a on Belnard on occasion, excuse me. Because at least at least uh, Belnard has a magic helmet, and uh, and this this particular magic item is on a a spiffy uh, print of the Hydra. That every that all the, the the GMs. If you guys were, if this were an actual in-person game, I would give all oh, of cool. you one of these. And they're really cool. They're really high-quality prints. Nice. They have uh, on the back. On the back, they have a, a bit of a map that uh, that you can see. That's about the high druid. They have a bit of fluff about the high druid and the wild wood in this particular case, and they have a magic item. So these are really cool. Uh, I do wish I could give you guys. Never seen them. You haven't never seen, seen them. Have no idea. <laughs> you need to. You need yeah. to bug everybody. These are these are the ones. Oh no, that are... I, I've seen I've seen the whole set. So. Oh okay. I get I was, to play I'm... ignorant. Okay. I was like I was like really you haven't seen them? Yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm looking forward to the next two. I really am because they 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 have my favorite art. And I don't want to spoil it for everybody, so I won't stay here. Um, but the the fourth season, yeah, what should be the fourth season has my favorite icon art, so I'm looking forward to that. Plus, I'm writing for that one too, so that's even more reason. Nice. Do you have multiples of those, Aaron? Yes, I do. I have, I have, I think five of each. Uh, I have six of each, and I have a. Uh, I have the one for the Lich King too. We didn't get to use the Lich King since uh, we weren't we weren't playing for the first season, but uh, there's one for the Lich King as well. And uh, I mean, if you guys really want me to, I can I, I can uh, mail them over to you. But uh, we can take care of that after yeah. we finish today. Yep. Uh, so you guys are in this ruin. Uh, you got a magic item. You think it's it's kind of an odd place. Um, you also, uh, uh, Joel, you find a, a, uh, another healing potion. This one looks like it's made out of tree sap for the most part. It's very thick. It's very, it smells, it smells a lot like pine sap. Um, pine sap and spices like sage and thyme. 
um, which is probably not a, a tremendously tasty thing. But better than warm vomit. Yeah, it, it's better than warm vomit, to be sure. And uh, and Gerald, as the, you're looking around... Uh, the Pine you, Soul Healing Potion. Yeah, the Pine Soul Healing Potion. <laughs> <laughs> which, which even, even when it's put that way, is still better than the warm vomit, which is still warm, by the way. <laughs> And uh, Gerald, you find a, a bit of oil, a magical oil, uh, for your, for your, uh, that you can use on your armor. And it's, what a what a wonderful time! I'm gonna oil up. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it pretty much will just give you a bonus to your AC. So, so you oil up. In 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 uh, traditional barbarian fashion, you are all not nice and oiled up because your flesh yeah, is your armor. <laughs> I'm I'm slightly mortified by the sight of zero oiling up. As wiggle, 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 wiggle. anyone yeah. anyone watching a dark elf oiling itself might be. So as you guys are going around, um, everybody, go ahead and give me a perception check. <laughs> Go ahead and use uh, plus wisdom on this one. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, get into the right screen. Jeez, roll that out. Twenty-three <laughs> and eighteen. That's actually some pretty decent rolls, guys. So. Okay. As, ball saving as, my Ciro, ass. as Ciro is oiling up, and as uh, as Kalud is very pointedly not looking at at Ciro oiling up, um, you notice this this glow coming from like some of the the runic circles that that Velnard had seen earlier, and some of these other things that uh, Gordon had noticed. You see them them starting to glow with this this uh, purple light, and uh, Ciro note first notices when his his uh, skin is starting to glow a little bit more purple than he's used to, as the the, the oily sheen reflects. And as you as you look over and uh, attempt to notice the source of this glow, you notice a a shadowy humanoid figure with a purple aura. It it erupts out of one of these these runic circles, and it it kind of looks around and it notices you and then it raises its hands up into the air and more and, and other shadowy figures, smaller ones, uh, start to rise out of the, the other runic circle. Some of it, some of which you hadn't even noticed. And uh, we will be rolling initiative now. Do they have clothing feet? Uh, no, they don't. But let me let me go ahead and move you guys over to the map. And there you are. Wow, an initiative that doesn't suck. <laughs> that is indeed pretty impressive. So Sears twenty. Uh, so twenty for me. I uh, should hit which is plus seven, but it should be plus six. Okay, so 20, 20, and 24. Wow, you guys rolled really well. Why are you not adding in? Ugh. All right, hold on. Roll 20 is being stupid. Okay, there we are. All right, yes. So, Ciro is 20, Velnard was 20, and Kalud was 24. Let me sort, and then let me let me see how many of these things. I'm just bring. So this was this is the humanoid figure that you guys are seeing down here, the Aegis, and you guys are also seeing. These are the smaller ones. There's some other people. Here. So 
some back here. Okay. Top of round one. The escalation die is at zero. Our frowny face, as it were. And it is Kalud. Your your turn is up. Kalud will. Hmm. Uh, so how far are the far farthest ones away? Say like one and two. Are they um, a, a movement away from me, or are they? Yeah, they're they're basically moving away from you. Okay. This is all this is all pretty nearby. So I'm going to move to uh, number three. And I'm going to use my Echo of Thunder attack. Be a 17 versus AC. 17 versus AC will, in fact, miss. Do you have anything else? Or and just a I guess that will be it. It does do level miss damage. Okay. So you have salt of this shadowy creature and it feels remarkably solid for all that it looks very insubstantial, but it is uh, unfortunately you don't get a very good hit in. So, Velnard, you are up. Hmm. While you do that, I will show the I will show the crowd the map. Because the map is pretty cool. They're surrounded. Alright, um... Uh... Velnard is going to roll behind this pillar here. I'm going to put him in front of it, but he's really behind it. Okay. Um, and as he kind of like rolls, using it for some kind of keep trying to keep, I don't know, not cover, but just limit the amount of things that can surround him. He okay. A shot at. Let's do uh, lesser ages thirteen. Okay. Let me go and zoom in so I can know which one 13 is. <laughs> I'm zoomed way out again. Okay. All right, yeah, there we are. Okay. Okay, that's probably a hit. It's yes, it is number. indeed a hit. And it isn't even, so go ahead and make your second attack. And that also hits. Okay. So go ahead and roll your damage. First one. Nine, second okay. one, eleven. So twenty in total. All right. Describe me how you kill four of these guys. They are indeed mooks. Okay. Um, Velnard, like I said, he he rolls uh, towards the pillar. As he's rolling towards the pillar, two shots go off, killing fourteen and eleven. And as he emerges from the other side of the pillar, he has somehow reloaded both his crossbolts and takes out 12 from 13. Alright, so 14 and 1. And they, they kind of, they almost, it's almost like they pop. 
when you when your your crossbow bolt goes right through them. They they implode, and and then all that's left is a, a small puff of a uh, of shadowy like like smoke, and the, which which blows away in the wind after a few seconds. Nice. So, all right. So, uh, Velnard, anything else? Uh, that's all. And uh, again, he takes cover behind that pillar, so hopefully, less things can close in on. Okay. Uh, Ciro, you're up. So many lessers, so little time. <laughs> Let's um, work in a clockwise direction. Lesser Aegis number five is first to feel the axe of fun. It's a fun. Actually, it's the sort of fun. All right. Da -da 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 Here comes the one. Here comes the one. Well, you might do okay. Come on. Yeah, all right. Well, it might hit, actually. 18. 18, well, 18 it was a one. It was two of them. It was just two ones. One in the tens place and one in the ones. <laughs> the ones place. See, I'm talking the oh, dice. Oh, yeah, you're not, you're not raging. That's right. All right, but you do hit. Yeah, there's no rage still going on. Dun, 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 dun. That's better than average. Better than kicking the head. 17. All right, let's see. Uh, describe how... How many of you Describe how three of them die. I take my sword and fling it to the side so that I can catch it with my other hand, piercing through the one right across the top of its scalp, and then taking the next one to cleave down through with my other hand through the other two. Right, in so their shock and surprise. So you're killing five, one, and two? Yes? I'm yep, that works. All right. Yes. Between the two of you, you have slaughtered many, many of these shadow creatures very quickly. I probably could have made this harder, but hey, why not? You guys deserve, <laughs> you guys deserve a, a relatively easy fight. Well, we're getting the rolls. It's, it's, it's all what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> what rolls? Hey, even you got a good roll this time. 18 is... It, uh, no complaints there. It's yeah. actually a hit. All right. And it's the Aegis' turn. And it will it will glide forward, and it will it will kind of glide through the uh, the pillar that uh, Belnard is taking uh, cover behind, and it will it will um, actually no, it's not going to do that. Oh, let me move it back. Uh, it blasts at uh, it, it sends magic at uh, all of you. It is this bolts of searing light. Um, and all right. So first, it's going to be a Belnard, and uh, you, since you have cover, uh, increase your AC for purposes of this attack. So ten, that would have missed anyway. Then at zero, seventeen versus physical defense. That will hit. And finally, at Kalude, uh, 10 versus physical defense. My physical defense is not good, but it's better than that. Better than 10? Yeah, all right. So, so Ciro, you will take um, you will take 5 damage, and you have a minus 2 on your next attack as, these, uh, as this ancient magic kind of makes your arms twitch and your, your vision blurry. Nothing new there. All right, and just you, another bad day at the bar. Yeah, <laughs> more or less. Except this one hurts slightly more than the usual. Well, All right, sucks. and the lessers are going to attack. How many lessers are still? Alive? All right, so each of you is being attacked by by one uh, lesser. Uh, and I can't. I don't even know how that's supposed to be pronounced. 
I don't know who wrote that, but I'm going to go yell at them later. Okay. So, let's see, plus six. All right, so first against Velnard again. Mm -hmm. This is versus physical defense. 24 versus physical defense. I'm pretty sure it hits. Yeah, that hits. Uh, against zero. Uh, yeah, I think a nat 20 hits. And finally, uh, against Kalud. 22 versus physical defense. The dice, the dice does not like guys this turn. So, um, Ciro, unfortunately, will take uh, 12 damage. The rest of you will take uh, 4. My, uh... My sexy oil. My tokens, uh... Is it broke again? Yeah, the hit point. Is. I don't know why it's doing that. I'll have to, I'll have to fix that again later. How much did I take again, Aaron? Uh, 12. 12. 12. You, you, yeah, you feel that uh, because the Aegis had hit you, you were especially vulnerable to the Lesser's attack, that their energy was able to uh, to hit you harder. I said uh, the machine of the oil that they, they, they saw, they, they like honed in on you. Yeah, they, they're like, ooh, shiny. <laughs> shiny. All right. Uh, top of round two, the escalation dies at one. Kalud, you are up. You are engaged with one of the lesser Aegides. Aegides. Whichever one of you wrote this, I hate you. I'll go yell at you later. I would, I would say Aegides since the big one is Aegis. Aegis, yeah. Aegides, yeah, whatever. Kalud's going to move into Claws of the Panther and then slide a little bit so that he's in within range of both of the lessers just in case he gets a 16 or higher on his first attack of Cat Between Hounds. So okay. We got one, and it attacked me, so I get a two bonus on this. 20 will indeed hit. Go ahead and roll your damage, sir. So it's not a 16 plus, so I don't get the second attack, but I do 17 to... Number three. Well, uh, given that they're mooks, you've just killed all of them. So describe how you kill not only four and three, but fifteen over there menacing Belmar. Go ahead and move. It, go ahead and move if you feel like that's that serves your narrative. Don't worry about it. Oh no, I don't. I don't. I don't need to move. Yes, yeah, some people just he feel flows kind of, He flows into a uh, cat between hounds. Back swings his staff into the back of the head of number three, which explodes with that pop and implosion of shadow. Then swings back around and smacks four in the face, which does the th same thing. Grounds his, grounds his staff with his left hand draws one of his throwing knives from his uh, sheath, bracer sheath, and at 16, and hits it between the eyes, and it also pops. That was good. I like that. So you have popped all the lessers. Uh, anything else from Clue? You still have a move and a quick... He will He will move and in engage the uh Aegis. Okay, you can't quite reach him on the move. But you can come close. Actually I can, because I have my leaf on wind, so... Oh, okay. 
Okay. I get a second move action as a free action. All right. That works. All right. And I will, I will stand at the ready in the Aegis's face. Okay. And uh, Velnard, you are up. Uh, Velnard does another roll to this pillar behind it, firing once once he clearing you know collude so he gets line of sight, firing at the Aegis again, or for the first time. Uh, he's using his lethal hunter on the Aegis so he can get crits on this. And okay, so your crit range is 18 plus? Uh, 17 plus, because I got the uh, the adventurer feat for it as well. Okay. So roll your attack. Oh, no. crap. The that one. The only time that I can hit somebody when I roll All a natural right. one. You roll the natural one, I'll give you a choice. I'll give you a... You can either have the bowstring snack, snap on your your crossbow, which means you'll have to replace it. As a uh, as your standard action, or you can shoot collude. Mm. Collude, collude. <laughs> 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 uh, now, to, if I did the collude one, I thought I want to hurt him, but I just want to see what my odds are of actually hitting. Uh, no, you you would actually hit him in this case. You wouldn't oh. you wouldn't roll another attack. You would roll there. You're gonna hit. Oh <laughs> uh, no 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 no! Then I'm not taking. It. All okay. right. Uh, yeah, then he, the Nard goes yeah, behind the, um, this thing would, and finishes his, yeah, and then just, yeah, that's all he does. He finishes yeah. his standard action, kind of like glow up fixing everything. Okay, so his bow string snapped, and next turn you can either just, you can either fire one bow, uh, one crossbow, or, fix or you can, yeah, or you, or you can spend your standard action to fix it. Okay, uh, fair. While, while not officially part of the rule, I really love doing the critical fumble thing and then making players choose what bad thing is going to happen. I it's, love the choose. It's That's fun. Awesome. It's, it's really entertaining. So, uh, Anything else from Veldar? I think you still have a quick action, but I don't think you have any quick yeah, I think he's spending. I think he's spending all his time trying to fix stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Ciro, you're up. Wee Shunk. All right. You can't quite make it all the way over to the Aegis, but you are you are close. Uh, I guess I'll have to actually throw some axes at him. Yep. Either that or you can rally and you can spend a recovery. Since you have been hit. Ah sure. <laughs> why why risk it? Always a thought. So go ahead and roll your recovery. <laughs> we that's not tremendous, but you know it's eight points you didn't have before. All right. It's and like it's saying, "Great, I got a small fry. It's free with that." Well, yeah. All right. Well, your so the your other two recovery rolls for. Really hot. Yeah, they were pretty good. Yes. Basically. All right, so the You are turn. balancing. Oh, you, let me the, take one. The Aegis will, will flow through Kalud, go over here, and then we'll shoot bolts of... Let's see, which one is this one? Uh, bolts of fire at everybody. This is going to be versus physical defense. Actually, no, he might not shoot at everybody. Let me... Let me actually I'm, roll to see how many he attacks. I'm covered in oil. This sucks. <laughs> All right, he attack, he's going to attack Kalud, and he's going to attack Ciro. So, Flaming Bolts of Fire incoming. Uh, 26 versus, uh, versus, versus Kalud's physical defense. And against Ciro, that is 21 versus physical defense. Yeah, he almost hit mine twice. Yeah, kind of figured as much. So you, you both take five fire damage and five ongoing fire damage. Oh, awesome! Oh, oh five ongoing. All right. Yeah. So, so your 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 shiny oily self is uh is on fire. Great flame on. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but it is top of round three. The escalation dies at two. And Clude, you're up. You're also on fire. 
He's going to go punish the Aegis for trying to run away from him with his twin panther claws. There's the first one. 24 and 27. They will both versus hit. AC. So, 25 in total? Yeah, and then he's going to spend a, a key point to do another 10. Okay. All right. So you have you have brutalized this this creature. And then I will take my 5 damage and and then go ahead and roll your save. Yep. And I you, do save. You do manage to put yourself off the fire. Be done. And Velnard, it's your turn. Uh, Velnard has a coral bolt between his teeth as he fixes his other bolt, his other uh, crossbow, and uh, that's it. Okay. And Zero, it's your turn. Well, it's about time that I used something useful. Let's run at him. We are going to apply that wonderful feat we grabbed at the start. Unstoppable. Okay. So we might heal if we hit. Now all I've got to do is hit. Alright. You Get can give do it. That's, a, that's an iffy proposition, but you never know. Eleven sadly will not hit. Did you add in the escalation die and your magic weapon? I did add in the magic weapon. The escalation die would be a moot point on this. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. You still do miss, but you do your miss damage. Can and I give it? Can, can I give zero my racial reroll? <laughs> racial reroll. Jesus. Uh, but you do build frenzy at least. Woohoo! Frenzy. <laughs> Frenzy. All right, so the Aegis will will sweep away from both. Of, oh, oh, roll your save versus fire, Sierra. Okay. Um, I don't. Why is there a five by uh, underneath? I don't know. I, I I can't figure out what what the hell happened there. The it's it the the red dot is supposed to indicate that it's uh there. I it I don't know why there was five. It was really weird. Woohoo! You're still on fire. Burning, burning like a fire, going down, 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 in a burning ring of fire. <laughs> oh, it could be worse. Could maybe. Be going down. Maybe. <laughs> maybe right. it wasn't such a good idea to apply oil before a fight where <laughs> the monster uses fire. <laughs> Oops. Oh, All man. right. Flaming. No, this is a. Uh, this is bolts of. of Purple energy should go shooting out at everybody. This is first. We will go with Velnard. Thirteen versus physical defense. Miss. All right. Um, then versus is Clude. Twenty-three versus physical defense. And yeah. finally versus Zero. Also twenty-three versus physical defense. Um, all of you who were hit take five damage, and you uh, suffer minus two on your next attack. Woohoo! Can I go negative? <laughs> Given the way you're rolling, it's entirely possible. Uh, but top of the round, top of round four, Escalation Die is at three, and Kalud, you are up. No, it's at four, isn't it? No. On round four? No. I thought it was three. It starts, four, at, okay. it starts at zero. Yeah, it starts at zero. So if it's round four, it's it's just selection dice at three. Right. Okay. Unless I screwed up and, and put three up there a second time. 
No, I didn't, it was off the screen for me where I got it zoomed in, so I, I said. Okay. Yeah. Well, don't want to do that. Just trying to close the thing and. So Kalud is now staggered, which means he's extra peeved. So he will come in and shift into Heaven's Thunder stance. And... Oh, I know what the two is. It's the modifier, if you've got a... Because there's a two showing up on mine. Really? Yeah, do you hit a number when you put that in there? Yeah, I've got my input value window for my attack. And I put a two in, and now there's a two on my... next to the red. Huh. Weird. Thirteen will, sadly enough, not hit. But you still do your miss damage, unless you have anything else. Yeah, I will do my miss damage. And... Just... Actually, no. I won't do my miss damage. I will re-roll. Since I do have my racial reroll, I think Aaron may have died. Uh, I. He's coming back. I yeah, you you froze up my for computer. about twenty seconds there. Yeah, my well, I I know that my whole computer froze up. That wasn't just lag. Okay. I decided to use my encounter reroll and roll okay. nineteen on the and you gotta, reroll. You got a nineteen. All right, nineteen will hit. So it would be 11 plus 5, so 16 total because I'm staggered. All right. Describe how so it dies. My or is destroyed, anyway. Well, he ran back into the circle that he was in the center of. And I slam the butt of the staff into its face, and it disappears with the pop. And I see this intricate little bottle on the ground in the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. and, and I turn my staff down and smash the bottle, and it explodes outward. And I hear a scream. Okay. So it is gone. But you notice that even as you destroy this one, you notice that the glow from those circles hasn't completely disappeared. And you think that if you linger around here too long, more of these creatures might, might pop out and attack you guys. Boo. Not acceptable. But you, you, you think that, that it might take uh, an hour or two. You have enough time to uh, to rest and recover for and catch your breath and stuff like that. That's, so you guys uh, can have a you guys have a short rest. Uh, spend your recoveries if you need to, or if you want to for that matter. Um, I think let me see, let me double check this for you. I would never want to. No, no. I want to sit here and well, you're addicted to pain, so, you know, it's... <laughs> this is all planned. I'll be right back, okay, guys? Okay. All right. 
All right. Yeah, I'll, let's take a, a really brief break so everyone can get something to drink. Awesome. Good deal. And we, right will, we, will, we will return when everybody is back. In the meantime, I'll see if we have any questions about Greece, which we don't. Sad. Sad, sad times. I missed the questions about Greece. And I'm going to see if we have any questions elsewhere. Comments. Any comments? Anything? Nope, nothing yet. Sad, sad times. I missed the question. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it won't let me change my uh, max hit points to 40. Let me let me go ahead and change it for you. I think I need to mess around with it. Um, just the way that it works for missions, and the way basically the way I set it up that it's it's persistent is just kind of a. It takes all the things that were there when I first associated your that token with your character, and it uh, it, it it doesn't change them from uh, from map to map. You, I mean, you can change in theory. Anything you can change should change from map to map, but I don't know that you can change the max on that. I think I have to do that. But uh, I'm going to get something to drink. I will be right back. As soon as Gerald's back, we will we will continue on.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So let us continue onward and, and see what else you guys can run into today. So uh, after leaving the ruins, you, you travel for probably another hour, hour and a half. And then you run into the next really big problem on your way towards this this tower that's your next landmark. And that is namely that you guys run into a, a chasm that is that is pretty wide and it is far too long for for you to go around. It is also far too deep for, for you guys to to go down and climb back up. It would take days to go around and it is just not feasible to climb it, you don't think. It is it is just that deep and it looks that treacherous. So and how wide is the chasm? It it's it's pretty wide. It's uh hundred feet. It's hundreds of feet across. Hundreds of feet across, got it. Yes, hundreds of feet across. If you need an exact number, it's about 300 feet across. No, that's fine. Hundreds works for me. Ah, uh, can't throw a donkey. Nope. Which is good because you don't have the donkey anymore. Anyway. There will be a second Harry. <laughs> uh, Bernard looks over the edge. Um, I mean, is there anything? Just tell me what as he looks down, what he sees. It, it's pretty. It's a pretty sheer rock face going down. Uh, it, it is. It is exceptionally deep. So deep, in fact, that uh, you can't see all the way down to the bottom, or you're not sure you're seeing all the way down to the bottom. But it is pretty. It, it is. It is exceptionally deep. What's the environment around us? Is it still the forest? Um... It's cleared out a little bit. Um, it, it, there's like a 25, 30 yards worth of, of kind of open space around this chasm, but beyond that is uh, is more forest. Yes. Khalid will try to uh, look around in the clearing area for any signs or markings that uh, the followers of the High Druid may have left as far as directions, you know, waystones and the like. Um, all right, go ahead and roll me, roll me a perception check, plus wisdom. You don't see any. Uh, well, that would be a a, a seventeen because I didn't add. Yeah, even so. I, in this case, you don't see any waystones that would indicate how you get across. Most of them seem to indicate that you go around, but as I, I mentioned earlier, it would take days to go around this, and uh, spending more time in the woods, given uh, how how dangerous things have been so far, would not be not be something you're eager to do. In the equipment list, where it's when we picked up Elven Roll, does it state how many feet it is? Anybody remember? It's, uh, if you picked up one segment of, one item of it, it's 50 feet. That's what I figured, okay. So, I got one rope. Does anybody else have more? I mean, we would need five more. <laughs> I don't know. I've got one, but I, unless Jared's, unless Jared's also a ropeophile as a, as well as a masochist. Uh, you know, um, Kalud, uh, you know that you might be able to uh, make some sort of rope out of the vines in the forest. It wouldn't last very long, but it might be enough to help get you guys across, depending on what you're you're trying to do. Well, I will go inside the forest canopy and look for uh, suitable 
viney protuberances, uh, as, well before, as, before. as well as looking for any sort of uh, small branches and the like for reinforcement. Okay. Uh, and and anchoring. Now, okay. just real quick, uh, Kalud, do you in your monk training? If if I was able to, because I have a heavy, I also have a heavy crossbow. If I was able to get a shot across, I don't know how how sturdy it would be on the other end. With your monk training, and could you make yourself light as air and walk across a rope or no? Um. I've. I've got the improbable stunt talent, but I don't know if that would be something that would qualify yes, for that. That definitely qualifies. Plus, you have the leaf on the wind, which would uh, yeah, which would help anyway. So yes, you you think that you can uh, you can get across on the rope as long as it's a, it it manages to anchor at least a little bit on the other side. Okay, well then that's what we're doing. We're, we're uh, Kalud is finding him finding uh, enough vines to make up the. Access that we need for the rope. I bring out segments and for the other two to uh, work on putting together and reinforcing. All right. Uh, it takes you probably an hour to get the the vines and everything else uh, to a state that you feel that people could walk on them. It's not, or, or climb across them. It's not exactly ideal, uh, but you're 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 reasonably con confident that they're not going to break right away. They might, if you put too much pressure on them all at once, they might break. But one person at a time would probably not uh, not be a concern. And uh, then, uh, Joel, are you going to shoot the crossbow across? Yeah, with with a heavy crossbow. Uh, I mean, a heavy crossbow. It's a far shot, but he should be able to make a. Yeah, yeah. I mean, since you're not making a specific, you're not aiming a specific target. You can get it across. You can get it 300 feet. Um, it's kind of at the limit of the heavy crossbow. You, I mean, 350 is probably the, as far as you could possibly shoot it. Um, but this is within your your range, and. Uh, and we I'm not gonna. You don't need to roll for it because even if you miss, all you have to do is just pull it back up out of the chasm and, and shoot it again. So uh, it takes you a couple of shots, and then you. But on the the third shot, you feel it's really sunk down into something uh, on the other side. You, it, it's probably a fallen log, and a, a big fallen log, and it feels it feels pretty sturdy. It feels sturdy enough that uh, Kalud can can get across in the case. So that's that's the plan, and then Kalud will can get across, find secure it to something that's uh, firmer, and then uh, uh, Kalud will will wire walk across using his uh, bow staff for balance. <laughs> All right. So and does a fr he and as he's nearing the end, he's getting used to it. So he does a couple front flips for the last few feet and then double somersaults off onto the other side. Yeah, that's pretty improbable, all right. But uh, that's fine. So you do that, you show off for everybody. Uh, what, do the, what does the Russian drug judge give him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let's find out what the Russian judge gave him. Let's see. Give him a nine. That's pretty good. Hey. I can even impress Russians. <laughs> so you've done well. Um, I will grab the rope and make sure it's it's stuck in the the wood pretty well as it is, but I'm going to wrap it there's a nice branch 
nice thick branch that's knotted that's kind of hanging off a little ways away from it. So I'm going to knot it around and secure it so that even if that bolt wants to start to slip out, it's secure on the on the log. Okay. And I will also be holding on to it just in case. Okay. So you gesture back across the chasm that it's it's safe to go across. Who will who will go next? Zero. Hero, Hero, describe how you get across. And and it's, you're you're unfortunately muted, so I'm not hearing what you're saying. Clinging like a wet chipmunk, desperately above a pit full of gats. <laughs> <laughs> I scrappily grab for every moment so they don't fall over due to poor die rolls. <laughs> All right. So you make it across. It, it wasn't. It wasn't pleasant. The the, the I am vines, alive. Yes, the vines and everything kind of chase chafed you as you're as you're pulling yourself over. But Whoa. you are you are across and on solid land again. If this were Call of Cthulhu, I would ask if you now have a phobia of uh, of heights, but it's not Call of Cthulhu, so so you're fine. Um, the Russian judge gives you a five, which is actually pretty <laughs> impressive considering how the the chipmunk nature of it. It was a female Russian judge, and I was well oiled. <laughs> all right. So all right, uh, Velnar, describe how you get across. Uh, Velnard checks the, uh, now that two people have gone across, checks to make sure that his end is still secure, uh, tightens it a little bit more. He has uh, some of his red monk training, while certainly not as intensive as Kalud's. Uh, still, he's, he's, he's done similar things before, just not over this great a distance, uh, and goes across uh, slowly but surely uh, walking across. Okay. And you get an eight from the Russian judge on that. Okay. Fair. Did pretty well. The Russian it judge knows. It wasn't flashy, but it was effective, so so you're good. So you guys head off again. You can see this tower in the distance. It is definitely closer. You think you can probably maybe get to it by nightfall. You're not sure. It really depends on what's in the way. But you're you're pretty close. Um, you're definitely closer than you were at the start of the day. But unfortunately, one of the first things you see after going back into the forest is it's very, it is it is a swampy kind of area. It's marshland. There are still definitely trees, and but many of them are dead. It, it looks like this has been uh, submerged for for quite some time, um, and it is it is a thoroughly un unpleasant place, um, and uh, there's. And, and more than that, not only is it just unpleasant, the smell, the, the bugs, the, the other things that you might normally find in a, a swamp, but this one seems more dangerous than most. You're not sure whether it might be because of the, the, the rocks from Dark Sky, or it might be because of the, uh, the, the fact that it's in the wild wood and, and doesn't see a lot of civilization or other uh, mitigating factors, but, but you guys run into a number of different uh, problems that you have to overcome um, as you're going through the swamp. So the first thing is uh, we'll go ahead and start with uh, with C since Ciro is going has been declared the uh, the not quite effective uh, uh, scout ahead. He will get to go first. So go ahead and roll me a perception check. Uh, add your wisdom to it. Or in your case, subtract your wisdom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Another huge score from the, a dark elf. Three. So you you're you're going along. You hear this this kind of strange popping sound, 
like a, 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 a staccato popping sound, and a, a flame spurt erupts right under you. Uh, and let's let's see if it actually hits you or your elven reflexes are sufficient to to dodge out of the way at the last second. Um, Ten versus physical defense. That's I'm fine. pretty sure that won't hit. So oh, so yeah. at the very last minute, you you feel this warmth coming out this this intense warmth right under your foot, and you move your foot out of the way and kind of jerk backward, and this this flame, this six foot pillar of flame shoots up. Um, just it, it it singes your your you, you don't have any uh, eyebrows anymore or eyelashes for that matter, but uh, but you're otherwise unharmed. So you look funny, but you always look a bit funny. So nobody's really gonna notice. Let's see. Kalud's um, really nervous about fire after the last fight. <laughs> yeah, you're still a bit oily, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oil careless. Oil. Um, so let's see who gets the next one. Uh, Gordon, go ahead and make me a uh, a, a perception check. Okie dokie. Oh, Dang. That's well, terrible. That is considering, terrible. Considering nine of it is bonus. So after after telling Ciro to go to the back of the line because he's clearly not very good at this scouting thing, you take you take points and are leading the group on through the forest because you're like I know the forest. I'm 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 one of the the high Jirids people, and you walk straight into uh, a patch of lightning sand. And unfortunately, by the time you notice it, everybody else is neck deep in it too. Oh, well, not literally neck deep, but they're they're right in the middle of the same patch. So let's see if you guys manage to, manage to get out of the way fast enough. So first, we're going to go against uh, Ciro. This is going to be versus uh, this is versus AC. So nineteen versus AC on Ciro. This is going to be twenty eight versus AC on Kalud. Which is only as it should be, considering you let them right in. And 18 versus AC on Vilnar. That's a miss. So did, did all of you get hit? I did not. Okay. So you managed to step out of the way. You're like, you see everybody else get sucked down really briefly. And you're like, holy crap. You jump up on a tree root and manage to, to, to see the edges of this, this lightning sand trap. Uh, the other two take. Let's see how much do you take. You take three damage as your 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 lungs are scraped raw from breathing in this this very fine grain sand, and having to 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 claw your way out uh, with with a luckily nearby vine or root. And yeah. Finally, uh, Velnard, go ahead and roll me one more perception check. Velnard, twenty-four. Nice. So you managed. You you've decided that that uh, that the other two are useless, and you're going to take points because clearly they're not they're not keeping you guys out of danger. It's not quite working the way it should be. And you're leading them along, and you see, you see some some huge rats. These, these are, are rodents of seriously unusual size. Yeah, I was getting that whole vibe throughout this whole thing. Yeah, uh, if you'd read the if you read the adventure, it's even more. <laughs> but um, I love uh, I love this adventure. But uh, so you see, the, these rats are huge. They they are at least the size of, of Harry Burley. But and you figure that it's probably not a good idea to go and pick a fight with them. So without even telling the other two that that uh, that you've spotted them, you lead them on a detour around to make sure that these rats never get a, get close to you. Okay. And uh, let's see. Oh, I passed that. Um, luckily, also while you're in this detour, you find the skeletal remains of what used to be some sort of traveler. 
uh, their clothes and everything else has been have completely rotted off in this this woody weather. And you can see that the bones used to have been gnawed on by some forest creature, but their their rucksack for whatever reason has been entirely left alone. And you go poking around in it, and you guys get let's let's find out. You guys get three healing potions. These guys, this, this actually seems like legit healing potions. These these taste like, you know. They they don't taste like warm vomit. They don't taste like like pine sap and and herbs. They taste kind of like just a little bit of sweet water with a hint of cherry. It's they're kind of like Nyquil except not quite as bad. So you guys get three of those. That there's there's other stuff in the rucksack, but it's uh it's just junk for the most part. It's you know some rusty buckles. Some rust, very rusted uh, iron spikes, the uh, a bit of rope that has you're not sure that it can support a, a squirrel's weight, let alone any of yours. So is Velnard keeping all of the healing potions, oh, or no, is no, he, no, he distributes them? Okay. All right. Everybody's got everybody's got a healing potion, which which given the way your guys' things go through, it's uh, probably a good idea. Um, you guys, as you're going through this swampy area, it's you hear some sort of some sort of monster, and Velnard knows that this is not the this is not the uh, rats that he was hearing earlier. This sounds this sounds both bigger and possibly more dangerous, but thankfully it doesn't come close enough to you guys to even catch a glimpse of it. And uh, it's probably something to be thankful uh, thankful of, I think. Um, and not long after that, you guys get out of this swamp, and you're you're back into more proper forest. Um, unfortunately, not long after getting out of this forest, you notice that there is these. You're being followed by this pack of wolves. Uh, everybody, go ahead and give me a perception check. Plus wisdom as you breathe. Twenty. Wow. That's Nat twenty. Nat twenty. Twelve. Not so good. And what does Sierra do? Have the dice failed you again? At least you rolled better than Gordon. Um. So, um, Ciro and Kalud, you notice these wolves, but Velnard, you notice that there's something really odd about these wolves. And one of them, you you catch a a glimpse of them. A really good look at it, and you notice that these wolves are actually—they're not living creatures. They're actually made of wood, and you can see that their fur is—is is kind of uh, like a—it's almost like a chia pet. It's—it's it's, a uh, its grass and other uh, green uh, and green plants that are growing out of them like fur. But the 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 body of these wolves themselves are are actually uh, wood, and you can there's this this glowing green, these, this green glow coming from their eyes as they're circling around you. You can see that they're kind of, they're they're stalking you, uh, but they haven't attacked yet. And uh, they're they're following you around for, for at least a good mile. They're almost two miles. And then you guys notice the, the, the tower up ahead. And it is, it is probably a mile away. The, the woods themselves have dropped off, right? right. And as you guys are walking across what's now uh, open land, just hills and rocks and that sort of thing, as you guys are walking across this towards the um, towards this tower, the, the wolves burst out and they're running after you. Um, everybody go ahead and make me an athletics check. Add your, uh, add your strength. Actually, no, add your constitution. Thirteen. Fifteen. And, and twenty-one. All right, so you guys are sprinting away from these wolves, and there is a lot of these wolves. There are probably, probably 25, 30, maybe even more of them that you can't even see. You're sprinting away from these wolves, and... Um, 
you get the feeling that after you guys are, are sprinting probably a good quarter mile, uh, and at that point the wolves start to kind of slow down, and by the time you guys have run an entire mile, the, the wolves are, are turning around and, and running back to the forest. Um, Kalud, you get the sense that they don't want to be too far outside of the forest for some reason or another. Um, they, they don't want to be too close to this tower, or they don't want to be too far away from, from the trees or whatever. But they turn around and, and leave you guys behind. So you... Now that I've gotten a better look at them, mm -hmm. and that their the immediate danger from them is 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 past, are they something that I might recognize that might be a construct that the wild druid might have created, or are they it's something else? It's definitely something that a druid might have created. You don't know if the high druid might have done this, but a druid in general might have made something like this as a a guardian or something like that. But you you've never seen it before, but it, it has the it has the feel to you of a of a being something that that a druid might have created. But. But you guys are getting close to this ta this the tower. It is probably a half mile away. You guys, uh, uh, you're climbing up uh, one of the smaller hills that are before the tower, and you look down and you actually can see in in kind of a, a gully. You can actually see a tower, a, a, a town, or, or a village that's not terribly far from this uh, this tower. And uh, that's actually where we're going to end off for today. Is you guys cresting this ridge? You guys see this town? You're you're not too far from the tower, and uh, and we are going when we are pretty much done for it right now. Okay. So, to the uh, tower. Yeah. Is it? Does it look? Does this the village look inhabited? Yes, it is. It does look inhabited. So, uh, is it? Is it the same size as the last village that we visited, or is it bigger? Um, you know, I don't know offhand. That's something we'll, we will go into next week, though. Okay. So, um, but you guys will, you guys can, can get to the tower and the village next week, so. Um, are there any questions, concerns, comments, or anything before we end the broadcast? Yeah, we got to get rid of these cursed swords. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you need to make a sacrifice during the coming week so your, your dice roll better. Um... Everybody, go ahead and take an in, another incremental advance for next week. Okay. I know I, I forgot to do that last week, so I'm, I'm giving you guys some heads up right now. Um, hopefully uh, next what's, week. What if you take the skills one? Is that plus one to one skill? You don't actually add on to the skills. Um, so if your your skill like won't go up from a four to a five, it just it your skills are treated as though you're a level higher. So for purposes of any time you roll a skill, you'll you'll act like you're level three instead of level two. Ah. So, oh. so basically, it, it is a plus one to everything, but yeah, it's yeah, it's just not a it's just not adding directly on the skill. So okay. uh, that 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 sometimes confuses people that they think that plus one skills adds on to the skill itself, but that's not the case. Um. But all right, we'll be, we'll go ahead and end the broadcast. Everybody say goodbye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for the game, man. Bye.